Welcome, welcome, welcome. I had an exceptionally special part of my day today. For the last, I don't know, 15, 16 years, one of the women around my ministry, she's actually on my board. She and her family, they're like home to me. We've been friends for a very long time, and years ago, she gave me a great gift in that once a month for that entire year, she paid for someone to come in and clean my house for me. Now, I keep a clean house, but I don't always have the time to deep clean, spring clean, window clean. Um, and she recognized that, you know, when you're out ministering. Um, last week, I was out every night ministering. I teach uh, three different Bible studies. I uh, taped two different TV shows. I preached on a Sunday morning. Um, and that's a normal for my week. And for the last 15 or 16 years, she has re-gifted me that blessing every year. And the woman we have now is also a part of my ministry. And I just wanted, she has such a spirit of excellence about her. And when I came home today, I came home to redo makeup, change clothes, get my hair ready, uh, give myself a breath between office and studio. And she had swept out my garage. It had leaves that had blown in through the fall season. She straightened the garage. She deep cleaned my oven, which wasn't terrible, but needed it. Um, she even brought some of my Christmas stuff in off of high uh, shelves that I probably would have struggled to reach on her own. This is who she is. It's just a spirit of excellence. A and it reminded me of how she does everything as unto the Lord. She has such an integrity and an honor about her. She's such a, a servant of the most high God. And it just was a spark to me when I came home to see all that she had done in my home for me. I love a clean home, completely dusted and vacuumed and wiped out. And I have hardwood floors all through my house. And so she, she cleans the hardwood floors every time she's there. This is how we need to serve God, with a spirit of excellence. You know, so often I feel like I fall short that I don't give God my best all of the time. This friend of mine gives her best. I've never known her not to give her best. She is almost consumed with serving God. She cares about everyone else. There's, when she comes to our Bible study on Wednesday nights, uh, she'll stop from, from wherever she is and come and stop and get certain things for certain people that she knows they would enjoy during Bible study, like a decaffeinated coffee or a hot tea or a cocoa or, for me, an iced tea while I teach. It's just who she is. And I don't want to just honor her. What, I'm, what I want to do is to encourage all of us to have a spirit of excellence as we serve God. Amen. It might take a little bit more effort and a little bit more work. But oh, what a blessing excellence truly can be on this earth at this time. Amen. Amen. Well, we are creeping ever so closely to Christmas. We're just a, a few weeks out, three or four weeks out, depending on when this airs. And I, I thought about, you know, I read the Christmas story every year. I try to glean something new from it. And God did that. God gave me something that I had not seen. I'd seen it, but really had not. Um, he didn't reveal anything special about it. So I'm calling this study today, Meet and Greet. <clears throat> Meet and Greet. And I'm going to go through Luke chapter 1, basically verses 39 through 45, just those six verses in there. It's the story of Mary and Elizabeth. And I, I know you think you know it, and I know I know it. I know you know it. But can I show you something so beautiful that I had missed for most of my life? Well, actually, all my life until I started studying. So soon after the angel met with Mary... When Gabriel said, you know, you're going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, you will, you've been called to bear the, the Son of God, the Messiah, the King. Mary journeyed to Elizabeth and Zechariah's house, 
some, some miles away. They were her relatives. Elizabeth was her cousin. And um, Mary probably felt the need to get away from her village and the questions that would certainly come up about her pregnancy. The side looks, the harsh words, the mockings, the rejection, the whispers. And I'm sure Mary felt as though she needed to get away. And so when Mary arrives, um, it's obvious that something special is about to happen. So this is Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 41. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. I love that. She took off and she went to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In the spirit, Elizabeth recognized the mother of the Messiah. Now she knew Mary as a cousin, but here she recognizes Mary as the mother of the Messiah, even though she had no way of knowing Mary didn't pick up the phone and call her and say, mm, I had a visit by the angel from the angel Gabriel. But remember, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, had a visitation from the angel Gabriel. And so she was going to be one who could understand an angelic visitation. But it was in this moment that she asked a very important question. And this is the question we so often overlook. Look at verses 42 and 43. In a loud voice, Elizabeth exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. And then she asked this question, but why? why? Why am I so favored? This is Elizabeth. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? We overlook that question because we're so, you know, keyed in on John, who is John the Baptist in Elizabeth's womb, leaping for joy, or that Elizabeth got filled with the Holy Spirit, or that Mary is coming, having just gotten the word that she was going to have the Son of God. But we don't always ask this question, why? We miss this. And this is where God's taking me. This is going to be totally off of Christmas really truly meet and greet in our fellowship time the why is important that's a question we really ask why should we meet together meet and greet at our church on Sunday mornings we have a moment of meet and greet now granted through COVID it was a handshake it wasn't even a handshake it was a Hey, from a distance, you turn around your seat and say good morning to someone. Well, we've officially uh, grown past that, and we now shake hands and hug by choice. Uh, you're not forced into it. If you don't want to, you can just put your hand out and say no thank you or good morning. But we have a group of huggers. We have a group of greeters. We have a group of meters in our church who love the fellowship together. And so we have a moment of meet and greet. This is a great time in our church. And so when I was studying for this, God asked me what was so important that Mary and Elizabeth meet. There are a lot of stock answers, a lot of religious answers, but I want to pull it back. I, I just want to pull it back. Because why, why, the question really for me right now is why do I meet with people? Why do I fellowship with people? What's the purpose of going to church? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Why do we go to church? Oh, we have, you know, a few stock pat answers, like because Jesus told us to, because that's what the early church did, because that's what our parents did, because that's what we know is right. Um, but these are all true, but they're not the right answers. There is an epidemic of believers who stay away from church now. The pandemic has become an excuse to sit at home and not fellowship. 
We've lost people who are just so content, not for the right reasons. We have, a, we have some who, for good reasons, are staying home because they're immune deficient or immune, immune compromised, or they've had health issues. But we have other people who just stopped coming. They, it was just easier to sit on the couch, drink a cup of coffee, eat some donuts in their pajamas, and worship the Lord. But they became consumers and not participants. When you sit home, you become a consumer of church, not a participant of it. You're just consuming what is being fed to you. You've become a church consumer or a spiritual consumer and not an active participant. Because I doubt any of you who are sitting home and worshiping the Lord would not get up and dance or run around the church or even really lift your hands in worship. It's hard to lift your hands in worship when you have a donut in one hand and coffee in another. And yes, I'm sounding a little bit harsh, but this is what's happening. And so this here about Mary and Elizabeth, I, I want to just impart to you. I want to speak into you. You say, Jenny, well, you're on, you know, here locally in West Virginia. I'm on at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, I chose that time specifically so that it would not interfere with church time, that people wouldn't make a decision to stay home and watch me or go to church. Eight o'clock in the morning was pretty safe to get up and while you're getting ready for church or having breakfast and then get ready and go to church. So I think in many cases, as I study through this, we get the wrong idea of what church meetings are for. Well, you could say, well, because I learned the Bible there. Or we need ministry. We need someone to pray for us. Or we just like being together. Uh, we agree with what's going on uh, because the church meets my needs. Um, all of these reasons are good, but they really set you up to stay home. Uh, because we learned the Bible, well, I can learn it at home. Well, we need ministry. Oh, I can just send in my prayer request and know that they're praying where we like each other, we like being together. Oh yeah, but I, I see them in a restaurant, I'll see them at Walmart or another grocery store, so I, I, I'm okay not to go. Um, we go for the wrong reasons. Now we go because it should be a time where we get uh, energized to go out and be witnesses for God. But I want to turn it just a little slightly clockwise. Let me show you this. Look what happened when Mary arrived at Elizabeth's house again. This is how Elizabeth describes it. Luke chapter 1, verse 44. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Why did she say this? When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Think about what she said. As soon as the sound of your voice, your greeting entered my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Could the Holy Spirit have filled Elizabeth without Mary being present? Yes. Could John have leapt for joy in the womb without Mary? Yes. Would those things have happened without their meeting? No. See, there's the meeting, and the greeting was what Elizabeth exclaimed, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears. If I'm sitting home, I'm not hearing someone's greeting hitting my ears. I'm not seeing them face to face. See, that's what we have to learn. God does unique things in our fellowship. Let me tell you what happened in our church yesterday. Two amazing things happened yesterday. We have a man who comes off, and he belongs to another church, but because we have an 8 o'clock service, um, he can come and visit our church, and then most of us go on to other places. And so he came... And he, just a few months ago, lost his wife of uh, uh, 50 plus years. And he is doing well, but he is grieving. 
But he comes and he worships and he fellowships because he knows the power. But he brought Christmas, you know, the, the typewritten Christmas cards where you tell your story of the year, what went on. And he handed them out to several of us. Um, my friend Renee, who sits next to me, who also plays the piano, she starts out the service with a beautiful prelude. I lead worship from the piano, but she starts out on the piano. And we both took the, these cards from this man, and we just didn't even look at it because we were getting ready to start the service, tucked them away. Well, her prelude for the morning was, um, I sing because I'm happy, right? His eyes on the sparrow. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. She played that. Now, there's no words. It's just piano. But when I got to the piano, which is right after she gets up and leaves and I go and sit down, it's like a tag team. I said that. I said, oh, we sing because we're happy. We sing because we're free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And I said it just like that. And there were amens in the congregation and smiles and uh, sighs of peace. Well, that came and went. We go home and I open up his card because a friend said, did you see what he wrote? And I said, no. So I opened it up and what was it? The song on his Christmas card was his eye is on the sparrow. And we did it for him. We didn't know. But when he came, he was so encouraged. He was so encouraged by the fact that, that not only did he have it because it was his wife's, one of her favorite hymns, he had all the words written on that paper, his Christmas card. Why that song for Christmas? I don't know. But then when my friend played it and I just spoke the words out, he was so encouraged. Those things are unique to meeting together, to meeting together. So then also after the service, a young man, he and his wife who've been coming for a while, uh, said, do you mind if I say something? Well, absolutely. So I'm still seated at the piano. Um, the, the man who preached the sermon, because we rotate in and out of the pulpit, was standing there by the pulpit and he started talking about what a message that man preached for him. Now, to be honest, we all didn't get a whole, I didn't get a lot out of it, um, uh, just because obviously it wasn't for me. It, the word was always for me. But you know how some messages speak right to you? And I amened him. I knew what he was doing. I knew what he was preaching, and it was powerful. And I appreciate the, the time he put into it. But it spoke to this young man. We also introduced a new Christmas song that yesterday, that morning. And my Christmas song that, that the Holy Spirit chose matched his sermon. And this young man said, that was all for me. He had come to the altar during that last song, the new Christmas song. And he came and just poured his heart out to God. That only happens when you meet and greet. That wouldn't have happened if he were at home. He wouldn't have felt the spirit move like that, like it was moving through our, our, our service. Because sometimes the spirit is so palpable. Well, couldn't he move it at his house? Absolutely. But there are distractions. There, there are other things and other people and uh, children in the house or something cooking on the stove. or It could be a lot of things, but there are distractions. And, and, and this is what God's trying to speak to us, that... This is what we have to learn, that God does unique things in our fellowship. There's a special move of God that he reserves only for those times when we are together. That's probably because there's a greater focus on what God is doing when we meet together. Luke 1, 45. Luke 1, 45. Blessed is he, blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. <sighs> what Mary heard in private was encouraged in public. She was all alone when she heard the angel's declaration over her. 
But when she went to Elizabeth, Elizabeth, it was a public meeting. I mean, it was in the house, but you understand what I mean. She met with someone. There was a meet and greet. And when she did that, there was encouragement and confirmation. You see, Mary was told something by the angel in private, and now she gets this public support, this public encouragement. That's because we're encouraged when we come together. We can encourage one another. We can speak to one another. You see, Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah, was told something in private too. He was in ministering before the Lord in the, in the Holy of Holies. <clears throat> and an angel visited him and said, you will bear a son and he will call him John. Well, John came out and there were a whole bunch of people outside waiting for him. And he wrote down what had happened and wrote, you know, he told Elizabeth what had happened. What happened in private was encouraged and confirmed in public. Elizabeth is the perfect person to encourage Mary. You see, it wasn't just Mary running to Elizabeth. It wasn't just Mary escaping the taunts or the mockings back in her hometown. This was Mary and Elizabeth demonstrating God's power when two come together. When two come together. The Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth. John leapt, leaped in the womb. Mary was encouraged so much so that she was able to go back home and live this beautiful life as the mother of the Son of God, espoused to Joseph, living a good life with Joseph, caring about Joseph. Joseph was such a caring husband. Once he had an experience with an angel, and the angel confirmed, and then they two came together. Joseph went running to Mary and said, what I was told in private, I'm coming to tell you together, because there's encouragement when two or three come together in Jesus' name. You can't get that sitting at home. You cannot duplicate that sitting on your couch while everyone else is experiencing the flow and the move of the Holy Spirit so many are sitting home on couches missing this you see we have to learn that the private can never replace the public and the public can never replace the private but the two work together the two, what God speaks to me in private Jenny Fister in my house what God speaks to me in private I will ponder it in my heart like Mary did. Because remember, Mary did that first. She pondered it in her heart. And after she had spent time with God alone, she went and found someone to encourage her. She went to find fellowship of another believer. That happens to me a lot in my home, where God will speak something in private or he will let me see something that I've never seen. He'll reveal something that he wants to speak to me. And I'll ponder it in my heart. And I'll pray over it. And then, and then, I'll get encouraged by the fellowship. God had called me to fast a few days. And I've been fasting partial days. I hadn't done full days. And a friend of mine just texted out of nowhere... And then she called and she said, hey, uh, I, I, I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you because I feel like God wants you to just, you know, deepen your fast a little bit. H how would she know? Well, that fellowship, that fellowship created an atmosphere in which God can do unique things only when we're together. He couldn't do that for us if we were apart. This is so amazing to me. That I, I just have never seen it in this way that the fellowship, the meeting and greeting of the two of them is what created that moment that Mary was confirmed, Mary was encouraged, Elizabeth was filled in the, with the Spirit, the baby inside of her leapt, and, and Elizabeth asked, why? why? Why should I be so highly favored that you should come to me? And here's the answer because we both needed one another. <laughs> she wasn't highly favored because the baby leapt in her womb. She wasn't highly favored only because she w was privy to a piece of information that no one on the earth knew, but Mary and Joseph. 
She wasn't highly favored because Mary chose her to whisper the secret of what God had done. No. Elizabeth was favored because God did something special in the presence of that fellowship. That's why she was highly favored. Because God showed off for the two of them when they were together. See, this is where Hebrews comes into play for us. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another all the more as you see the day, capital D, that day of judgment approaching. You see, the writer of Hebrews, I believe that's Paul, but the writer of Hebrews is, is urging us to get off our couches and don't let pandemics keep you home. Don't let laziness keep you home or ease. Don't let the ease of it keep you home. Get up, come to church, go to church and experience the unique fellowship and the unique presence of God when two or three are together. That's what Jesus said, when two come in my name, I am there in the midst. Well, you might be sitting at home by yourself. There are no two or three together. You might have your wife or your husband or your children, but your children are all playing, and your spouse might be concentrating a little bit, but there might be a crossword puzzle in their hands. But when we come together in worship, when we meet together, something spectacular happens. And that's what I'm encouraging you to, to understand this Christmas. It's more than just a meet and greet. It's a meet and greet of God and his presence. If you do not know the baby Jesus who grew up to be the Messiah of the world, who died for your sins on the cross, this is a great time of year to seek him out, to invite him into your heart. And if you don't know how to do it, will you allow us to help you? Call us at the ministry or get online. It's a beautiful picture he's painting with his life with yours, one brush stroke at a time. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's program, One Brush Stroke at a Time. If you have been blessed by this study, would you share your story with us? We want to hear how God is moving in hearts all around the globe. If you have a question, would like more information, or would like to request prayer, please visit our website at brushstrokeministries.com or connect with us on Facebook at Brushstroke Ministries. You may also contact us at Brushstroke Ministries, P.O. Box 2353, Buchanan, West Virginia, 26201. Join Jenny Fister every week at this time to hear a fresh revelation as she paints a beautiful picture of his word, one brushstroke at a time.